Uh, let's have a look at uh, another example. Um, this time it's taken from the uh, from Java itself, and um, uh, this thing here, number, is uh, an abstract class, and all of these around here are subclasses of that abstract class. They all extend it, and um, you'll be familiar with these. These are just the ordinary wrapper classes in the package java.lang, and in java.math, this package there is um, big integer and big decimal. And um, big integer is um, an arbitrary precision integer, and that's an arbitrary precision decimal. And um, uh, you can do things like um, test for whether the integer is prime and other sort of things as well. And here we've got uh, the package Java util concurrent atomic, and uh, there's an atomic integer and atomic long in there. And um, they do things like um, uh, capable of performing indivisible operations. So you can do things like um, add something onto one of these atomic integers and get its value returned as one indivisible operation. And this is important when you're dealing with concurrency. And, um, and I'll come to that eventually. Don't worry about that. Okay, so let's have a look at what's actually in this abstract class number here. Well, this is what the uh, number class looks like, and um, fairly obviously it's abstract and uh, public. And um, being public means that um, uh, it can be accessed uh, from packages which are outside of the package which number is in. Now, um, also, it uh, implements this thing Java IO serializable. And now, if you look at that, you see it's completely empty. So it doesn't place a lot of constraints on anything. And uh, this thing down here is also has to be tied up with this uh, serializable. Now I don't want to say too much about serializable because um, that's something to talk about in the future. So you just ignore that and uh, that. It doesn't have a great deal of impact on what I'm about to say anyway. Now um, uh, the rest of this is um, and it's straightforward. We've got uh, four um, abstract methods here, and uh, what they're for is um, converting the value, and uh, that will be the value held by the subclass of number um, into either an integer, long, float, or a double. Also, there's this down here, which is not abstract, as you can see, and um, it converts the value into a byte value. Now, if you want to convert to a byte value, the obvious way of doing it, because uh, the Java virtual machine is basically a 32-bit integer-oriented machine, really, the thing to do, and the way to do it, is to convert it into an integer and then cast the integer to a byte. And similarly for short down here. Now, what happens is um, when the uh, when you when the subclasses are uh, defined, they have to um, uh, give implementations for all these uh, methods, and in particular for int value. And whenever a subclass tries to return a byte value, calls this thing here, uh, the int value here gets called. And what happens is the uh, it's the int value in the subclass which uh, gets called, and uh, converted to a byte and returned. So that's the um, that's the clever bit, or it's probably not that clever, but uh, that's what happens anyway. 